uh, I will give you just an overview of orthosis and pro prosthesis for the practical examination of the uh, candidates. Now, uh, prosthesis and orthosis, they're very important appliance, if you know that. And particularly, it is important for the orthopedic and neurology patient, not for better rehabilitation. And very, very important for examinees for passing practical examination, and especially for the DNB candidates. You know that in DNB candidates, 150 marks out of 300 uh, is the pass mark that they will have to achieve. But uh, finally, it is uh, during the tabulation we find that they're short of uh, five marks, seven marks, like that. And these parts, this. Uh, uh, I mean, pro orthosis, prosthesis, but, and from there, they can collect few marks as well. So this is, this is very, very important for the DNB candidates, you know. First of all, define orthotics and prosthetics. What is orthotics? Orthotics is the science that deals with the appliances for better rehabilitation of patients. And prosthetic, it is the science that deals with the device which replaces part or all of the body parts. Now, orthosis is an appliance helping and modifying functions of the body parts. Example, axillary crutches or the cervical collar. These are, are the common example of orthosis and prosthesis at the same time, as I told you, it is a device that replaces part or whole of the limbs of the body the prosthesis or the thumb hand prosthesis upper limb prosthesis like that but what you must know an examinee must know or during exam what we expect from the pgt or the examiners we expect that he will be able to identify the particular orthosis or prosthesis and he will be able to know i been to say the different parts of the orthosis and prosthesis, what material it is used, what is the mechanical principles, how does it help or its functions, and what clinical conditions it is used, and particularly the care of the limbs and orthosis and prosthesis to avoid complications. So orthosis, prosthesis related complications. These are the things we expect during exam. Now coming to the uh, little, I can't, it is blocking. Okay. Now or coming to the orthosis. Now what is the purpose of orthosis? It gives mechanical support to the weak part. It allows rest to the joint. It can maintain the joint in functional position. It can control a specific movement of a joint or it can block a, uh, uh, a particular movement or can correct the deformity. That is the basic function of orthosis. Now, different types of orthosis are available. Maybe it, it is static or dynamic orthosis. When you call it a static orthosis, that means it does not permit any joint movement but the dynamic orthosis that has a mobile unit which allows the movement. For example, dynamic cock up splint. In dynamic cock up splint, we uh, fingers, we can flex the fingers, can move that. And on the basis of the regions where it is used, regional orthosis, we can categorize lower limb orthosis, upper limb orthosis, and spinal orthosis. We are coming to that. But uh, we must know that what is good orthosis or ideal orthosis? What are the criteria? It must be patient friendly, number one. Number two, easy to handle. It should serve the purpose for which it is used. It must be lightweight, it have, and cosmetically good and should not damage the local skin conditions. That is a very important because after using so many times, we find that there are a lot of skin uh, problem. Now coming to the foot orthosis. Here, different uh, surgical shoe, we know. This is a very common thing. We uh, put it in exam table. 
and different parts of the components of the surgical shoes. What are the parts? As it is shown in the figure, toe box, vamp or the anterior part, throat, sole, counter. This part is the count counter and this is the hill and this is the sole. Sole may be inner sole, outer sole. I am coming in details later. Here, that shoe, surgical shoes, that can be that can have some modification depending on necessity. That modification might be internal mod modification or external modification. External modification means that either in the modification of the hill or the sole or the toe box. Here on the, my left side here, all these things, they have some modification. You have seen it hill can be modified. In the sole, there might be some metatarsal bar and this, uh, so many things. On the right side, in the internal modification, that is where the sole of our foot rests, that sole can be modified. How? Now, that is arch support, medial arch support particularly in flat feet, there is hill cushion, plantar fasciitis or something, metatarsal bar, and so many inner sole raised, outer sole raised, like that, depending on the necessity, where it is. But one has to identify what is there, what, no, it is, what how it is different from our normal shoes. Here is uh, already, uh, and that can be a separate class as well, this is a CTV, some uh, orthosis, foot orthosis for or the shoes for CTV. Two common things or the very often it will be asked or I would request our visit is that Ponce here, Ponce City, this is a Dennis Brown uh, shoes and abduction brace has been shown here and different types of telepi shoes. But we very often at that time, we ask the candidates Please uh, tell me the steps of the Ponsetti method of plaster cast. Step one, step two, step three, step four, like that. And when would you consider that abduction brace should be uh, now uh, he can use? At the same time, we would request I can, to go for the Pirani score. What is Pirani score? Is there any relevance with the uh, I mean, prognosis of the um, treatment? And how much is this bar, curved bar? Here it is bar. What should be the length? It should be the both the shoulder width. These are the few things very often it is asked in the course, I mean, uh, exam. So these parts to cover and go in details. Next is the AFO, that is ankle foot orthosis. These are the different uh, I mean, parts. Basic things we should know that this is the foot, this is the ankle, this is the upright or the stirrup, and this is the cup band. This is the basic structure of the AFO or the ankle foot orthosis. It is used in some ankle problem, or the instability, some ankle sprain, etc., or the paralyzed conditions. Here, AFO, conventional type, and this is the total contact. You see the total contact here. Now in context with that will come. This is very often put it in exam table. FRO will call it. Floor reaction orthosis. Very often one question is common. How does it work? What is the principle? We would be happy if the candidate answered. It is Newton's third law works here. What is that? No, it prevents knee from buckling without muscle action or control. Here you see, this is the AFO and the, the foot portion is kept in little equinus. And here it is a suprapatellar band. It is uh, used in the unstable knee, particularly used in CP, spina bifida, or the spinal cord injuries like that. So when patient is trying to stand, the knee buckles. So how it is prevented? Now, when the body weight falls, the 
a uh, body weight is on the on the uh, in, um, flow a reverse action or the force a force is directed upwards mm -hmm. and immediately mm -hmm. it's the uh, uh, suprapatellar band that pushes the knee to back backwards and at that time it becomes stiff stable so that is the newton's third law works here in flow reaction orthosis that is important and that question is usually asked next the knee orthosis knee orthosis what is that no it is in unstable knee or the ligament injury around knee or periarticular some fracture and displaced fracture it immobilizes the knee it extends from mid thigh to mid leg region different types are there it is locked statically locked or can be locked uh, by some other devices next comes the knee ankle foot orthosis or capho commonly it is called the capho what are the parts components are surgical shoes ankle joint unit upright the knee joint unit knee here it is knee joint unit and the knee uh, calf and thigh band and proper padding of course of here it keeps the knee in straight position in different situations clinical conditions much higher up if the pathology is much open if you want to keep raised to the hip joint as well then what to uh, then what to do then uh, what we do that uh, components are surgical shoes ankle same as that in addition there is calf and thigh band and pelvic band is there and it keeps the knee and hip unit steady and the special orthosis or lymphosis for that that is the abduction orthosis we very often prescribe or partnership for the containment of the head coming to the upper limb uh, process upper limb uh, orthosis rather it is not prosthesis hand orthosis it is wrongly written prosthesis not uh, or it is orthosis hand orthosis wrist orthosis elbow orthosis shoulder orthosis and special some orthosis this is one very common mallet it is small in uh, it is kept in that exam table mallet splint mallet finger we know will be we will ask the uh, candidate what is mallet finger how it helps and how long will keep it at least 6 to 8 weeks or more than that sometimes you will have to keep it this is dynamic cock up splint this is dynamic cock up splint I, because some movements are permitted in the mp joint and the wrist as well then what are the parts you may be asked this is the wrist support at what angle it is a 45 degree angle there are some elastic loop to fingers properly padded these are the parts now material what material is used sometimes we ask malleable metallic sheet usually aluminium or velvet padding or thermoplastic material velcro strap elastic band with loop these are the different now mechanism not only supporting the wrist and MP joint in extension, but also it acts flexion, it uh, active flexion movement with the help of elastic band. It with the elastic band, it always kept in extension, but we can flex it actively. So that's why it is called the dynamic as well. When it is fitted in fitted it keeps the MP joint and wrist in extension and it prevents finger drop flexion contracture of MP joint and lengthening of the uh, tendon and active flexion of the fingers with the help of elastic band will keep the finger joints mobile. So this is very often asked how uh, this, uh, uh, why this, uh, if I keep it the finger drop for a long time, what will happen? Tendon lengthening, tendon lengthens and there will be mechanical insufficiency if you repair it or if it uh, the nerve comes back with the lengthened or the uh, lengthened uh, tendon 
the mechanical insufficiency will ultimately result. That's why we prevent always the lengthening of the tendon. Dynamic, post, uh, in what clinical condition dynamic cock of splint is used? This is a common question. Posterior interosseous nerve palsy or radial nerve palsy or post-operative case of extensor tendon repair of the wrist and fingers. This is the common condition. If they answer like this, we will be very happy at least apart from saying other things as well. Now, how it is maintained? Daily skin care of the forearm, wrist and hand to watch for any ulcer, fungal infection, splint cleaning, these are necessary for maintenance. Now coming to elbow orthosis, one is that elbow orthosis for uh, post-operative patients or for active movement with hinge or without hinge sometimes. On my left side, this is the elbow band. Very often we prescribe for the tennis elbow. And this is elbow turnbuckle orthosis for stiff elbow, gradual stretching, very often too. And this is shoulder orthosis or base used in after uh, shoulder surgery or brachial plexus injury or burn contracture. It has a turn trunk uh, unit and the arm support, forearm support, and uh, this one uh, fixing with the collar devices. Special orthosis in fracture clavicles are very often it is used, figure of eight design with Velcro closure, adjustable straps, felt back pad, white soft padding. But here, very often the patient complains. What is the common complications? If it is too tight, sometimes what happens is that patient comes with the swollen uh, limb, forearm, distal swelling, or the some vascular compromise is there sometimes. Now coming to the spinal orthosis, cervical collar that is from mandible to manubrium. It may be soft collar, may be hard collar. Soft collar may be uh, the material used, the polyethylene foam and the hard collar, polyethylene plaster, geoplaster, jot. Almost in hard collar, the difference is nothing but uh, hard collar, uh, when it is used, neck movement is almost nil. There are very little movement is. Uh, but uh, it is in which condition it is used, used in painful neck conditions like inflammatory or degenerative or traumatic conditions. Uh, it is used temporarily for immobilization. This is another important orthosis that is show me breast. The full term, uh, I've been term is the sterno occipito as a mandibular immobilizers. It permits. But from its extent, this is the chin piece, this is the occipital piece, this is the sternal piece, and the back with the, some stabilizer. It permits very little movement of the spine used in stable spinal fracture in the sieve spine. Cervical halo. Cervical halo, same as it like that, but here you see there are four rods, anterior two, posterior two. Oh, sorry. And just a hello, this a hello. This is fixed to the skull with screws. This is the anterior sternal plate and similarly on the back. Extended cervical thoracic orthosis or Minerva jacket. Here, almost whole of the skull is covered with the chin support, occipital support. Here, anterior, anterior two rods are there extending from here to the lower costal margin and rigid frame to the inferior costal margin. It is extending spinal injury and case, port spine cases. It is very often used. This is much more uh, uh, extended cervical thoraco lumbosacral orthosis or in other words called the CTLSO or hello, pelvic brace. Uh, very rarely is used, but it is often kept in the exam table. Thoracolumbar is a Taylor's brace. The uh, used in spinal pathology uh, in T4 to L2, between T4 and L2 levels. Here is the posterior and anterior support is there. 
This is another anterior hyperextension orthosis where the pathology is between T4 and L2. This is a lumbosacral brace. The principle here, very often it is asked. Actually, when it is kept, it is tightly uh, applied. The lumbosacral corset provides anterior and lateral trunk containment and assist in elevating the intra-abdominal pressure. That is three-point pressures and restricts the restriction of flexion and extension can be achieved with the addition of the steel straps posteriorly. If you add, it will be much more steeper. So intra-abdominal pressure and if you put it, that is the principle. That principle we expect from the examinees. Here is Milwaukee brace for scoliosis deformity corrections. Here you see that upper extend is from here, the chin support occipital to pelvis. Here what has happened, there are posteriorly two rods are there, vertical and anteriorly one, and two pads are there. Pads are all is on the carp side, convex side. So a transverse loading from convex to concave side. Ultimately, what happens? Now, longitudinal destruction of whole spine occurs. That is the basic things of Milwaukee brace. That you want. If the candidate can answer in that way, we, are, we will be happy. Next, the coming to the prosthesis. Prosthesis is nothing but it replaces the missing part of the body. It can provide physical activity of the missing part. Patient satisfaction is good and socially acceptable. Now, prosthesis material, it might be POP and alloy, different fabrics. But what is good prosthesis? Once again, that must be lightweight, functionally good, and patient-friendly. Next, prosthesis of the lower limbs. Based on fabrication, prosthesis may be exoskeleton prosthesis, endoskeleton prosthesis. Here you see that endoskeleton and exoskeleton, here you see that weight transmission through the outer laminated, outer laminated cell occurs, but endoskeleton transmission through the PCB, PVC or metal bar. And it is covered by some uh, materials and it is got by molded uh, rubber. But this uh, endoskeleton, it looks very natural and cosmetically very good. But uh, this one is not, uh, does not fit. So this is, but, but this has come some mechanical problem as well. But one advantage is that endoskeleton, this is an adjustable bar. We can adjust the height as well. This is about the exoskeleton prosthetic foot. So in a lower limb prosthesis, important aspect is the prosthetic foot, prosthetic foot, that sound and the socket in below knee prosthesis. So coming to that, lower limb prosthesis and above knee prosthesis, apart from the surgical, I mean the prosthetic foot, that child, we need the knee and the socket in above knee prosthesis and suspension as well. Now coming to the prosthetic foot. There are two types very important. One is the satch foot and joy put foot. But joy put in Indian, Indianized foot, joy put foot, but it has got some uh, satch foot. You know, the satch foot, uh, it is a whole term is solid ankle cushion heel. It is most commonly used foot, but it has no mechanical ankle joint. The cushioned heel stimulate, stimulates the plantar flexion motion. Here it is, and it is heavy, very. But this Joypur foot has a lot of advantage. It modification for barefoot walking, made of uh, vulcanized rubber and shaped like normal foot. 
It is flexible and is helpful in working on uneven surface. That is important. So technical, some difference there between the Satch foot and our Joy foot here. Prosthetic shank. Now uh, we have already described the endoskeleton and exoskeleton. Endoskeleton and exoskeleton. Endoskeleton and weight. The molded rubber. And here it is uh, filled. This is uh, outer cell transmission through the laminated cell. And it is this gap is filled up by wood or some other materials. Prosthetic socket. Most commonly used the PTB, commonly used uh, prosthetic socket. Here, the thing is the charm is the patellar tendon bearing prosthesis, patellar tendon bearing, not end bearing. All the weight bearing is done below knee, movement is controlled by his own knee joint, and patellar tendon is the main weight bearing area within the socket. Here on the right side, you see this is the uh, area where the stump is there and the patellar tendon is here. Now prosthetic knee. In above knee prosthesis, we need to add the knee. Now knee is very much sophisticated, but thing unique is that movement. It permits single axis movement, uh, gives stability by uh, so many things. Uh, and it has motion control, motion control. That means it uh, certain degree of wind in stand space, swing phase, you automatic uh, that motion control can be by many devices. Now coming to the upper limb processes, components are, but upper limb processes thing is that uh, not only fitting the processes, but uh, it uh, cosmetically, it may look good, but thing is that if it does not move, it is useless. So thing is our concern is that power system, whether that power will be able to control the uh, terminal part. The terminal device, wrist and elbow part, arm and forearm part, and the socket suspension. Now the power system, that means it is such a system that one can move the terminal part Body movement control the processes. That is one system that myoelectric processes. Myoelectric processes. That is the action potential of muscle is used to I mean, uh, to uh, control. The Here there are some batteries, some electrical things, and motor is there, and that helps in. Uh, movement of this thumb and other fingers so that some activities will be allowed and that is very very important here is an e example myoelectric limb you see that even the finer things finer work can be done with the help of this myoelectric limb now for you axillary crutches that is some working aid very often we ask that tell me the different parts of the uh, axillary crutches. Axillary pad, that is the in which we get in the axilla. Second is the upright, here it is. Next is the hand piece, here it is. Adjustable rod, here it is. And the rubber ferrule at the crutch tip, some adjustable. The important thing is that crutch tip crush tip where it should be when we are working. I'm not talking about the gate. Gate will be the separate thing. Crush tip, it should be front and lateral to the toes. And hand piece should be uh, rested in such a height that elbow uh, will remain th at 30 degree flexion. And axillary pad, that will be five centimeter below the anterior axillary fold. And if I ask, how will you take the measurement of axillary crutch? There are two methods. One method, if it is standing from axillary fold to the tip, but that uh, crutches should be, uh, I mean, limb should be, it should be 15 centimeter 
away lateral to the toe and five centimeters in front. At that stage, you take it, the length from axillary fold to the bottom, up to the crash tip. That is one method. Our second method is that if the patient is shown from axillary fold, five centimeter below the axillary fold to the uh, bottom of the heel of the shoe uh, in supine position. That is the measurement of the axillary crutches. Coming to the elbow crutches. Elbow crutches is that height of the elbow crutches. That it will be, height will be such that the patient will be able to put his hand in 30 degree of full, I mean, uh, elbow flexion. And the uh, forearm cough is there. This is the forearm cough. It will be here. It will be placed here. It is the flexion crease. It should be away from that, at least five centimeter away from the flexion crease. And crutch tip will be away from that uh, two, I mean, lateral to the 15 centimeter uh, lateral and front of the two. That is the characteristic of the elbow crutch. And in that way, we measure the height of the elbow crutch. That's all about this thing. So take home message, message is that this part of orthopedics in daily orthopedic practice. And it is better to prescribe orthosis and prosthesis in treatment seat in correct way to increase the confidence level. Very often we ignore it, even in the exam, even the examiners also have tried to avoid prosthesis and orthotics. Teachers also have tried to avoid teaching prosthesis and orthosis. But it is good for the patient as well as for the examiner. Thank you very much. Mm -hmm.